Hi everyone, welcome to Natural Wonders. Today I'm going to be doing a painting of the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights. So what I've done is I've got some acrylic, white and blue, mixed together on the fan brush. And I've just slightly watered it down so that I can just come in here and just flick some indications of some little stars. I'm doing this with acrylics for a reason so that it dries and then once it's dried I'll be putting the oil paints over the top you see and I want this to stand through and just show through uh, just let it sprinkle a few different varieties because you get them so far away and some that are a lot closer and bigger so you want that variety in there of size if any come out and they don't come out right it's so easy to just totally and utterly get rid of them just a little bit of black gesso is all you need uh, just a few darker ones you see bigger ones at the top of the sky and then as you come down I want them to be slightly smaller and less spaced you know, more space between them as they come down. <laughs> Tend to get the smaller stars in the bottom of the sky. That might not even stand out to you guys, but it will when someone's looking at the painting itself. And that's what really matters. A lot of these will be covered up, but the odd one will show through. And that's all we need. Just a few to show through. Uh, nice scattering. Don't just have them in like lines. They do cluster sometimes, you know, in certain areas. But don't have lines of them or anything like that. They want to be quite well spaced. You'll get the odd one like this. Where there's three in a row. It looks a bit like a constellation. Sometimes you'll do them and accidentally create a constellation. <laughs> Millions and millions and millions of little stars. All in there. Little cluster of distant stars. Just down there. Probably be painted over. I just want to put a couple in. Happy. Amazing how many of these in the sky, those stars, you can't do enough. There's millions and millions. Flick it a bit harder and you'll get a few bigger ones out for the top area. Just by flicking a little bit harder with it. You see a lot of these are going to be totally covered up, but the ones that get through, they're the ones that really matter. Don't want one area of the sky where there's no stars, they're everywhere. Good. Might just get a bit more of that on there. And then just up in here. And a few more bigger ones. Yeah. Distant galaxies. painting around the sides of this so while you're not watching I'll just do around the edges right what I've done I've put a thin even coat of liquid well it's not liquid clear actually it's uh, 
I've been using something different this time. I thought I'd do a little experiment. I'm just using some rapeseed oil, a tiny bit of rapeseed oil I've used everywhere. Just to try as an experiment. And I've mixed this colour up. It's just a, a bluey mauve colour in there. And I've put a tiny bit of white to it. So it's got a tiny bit of opacity to it so that it stands out on here. And then I just want to get the smallest amount of that on this brush. Just in here, around this area, I want to apply some of that. And I want it to wash out, so there's just a little hue of it there. I don't want you to see a lot of it. I don't want it to be too opaque. Just a little bit of colour. The more you do these crisscross strokes, the more it will blend out for you. Yeah. That's it. You can put it in like there, you can see it. Just give it a good roughing in there. Get rough with it, and it'll just disperse lovely for you. And that's what you want. You want it to just disperse really nice. Now, I'm just going around this side because I can see it's where it's not even and where it is even. There, that's good. And I want it to be like it's washing upwards anyway, you see, with this being. The Aurora Borealis Northern Lights, it's gonna, gonna want to come up nice, even blend of that everywhere. Uh, just in this area of the sky, I'm doing this. Stars should still show through behind it. Those stars that we put in there. It should still show through behind that, so don't put too much of this on. Using it in a transparent manner. I know I put, I only put the white in it so that it stands out a little bit, otherwise it wouldn't have even stood out at all. There, just blend a bit of that up in there. Now that's probably enough for that. So I just really want to blend it all now. This is where you do your hard work. <laughs> the blending out. Of this. See this is going to come right up to here. So you can blend it gentle up there. So you can't see where the colour starts or stops is the idea. There. Just do that side first, work it out and then just in here I can just blend that away. Soft soft on that edge, just in there, nice and soft. The more you blend it, the more transparent it'll become. But I still wanted that colour to show through. Once you've got an even blend, it's a nice thing to just stick it up like so. Give it some of that movement. There. Right. So there's just enough in there for that. Right, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna apply with a different brush, a clean brush. By the way, that mixture was a mixture of uh phthalo blue. Prussian, uh, phthalo blue, ultramarine blue and a bit of crimson in with that for that morph colour you can hardly even notice it can you you know you don't want it to be too distinct you can always put a bit more in later anyway you see so I've mixed this red up here and this red's been mixed with alizarin crimson a tiny bit of yellow and some white this red here so again, we're just using small amounts of paint. Tap that into your bristles so it's really spread through there nice and evenly. That really helps. It wants to be spreading there nice and evenly. A lot of people make a mistake of adding too much. Right now with some of this colour, I'm just gonna start playing it up in here. Now it's sort of like, how can I put it, 
when you put when you see these northern lights it's sort of stretched out if you like it stretches itself out there's a colour in the sky absolutely gorgeous and it looks like it's shimmering actually it looks like it's proper shimmering right now I just want to carry that on up there and it actually comes right up into that area a tiny bit of white again just to make this stand out just a little bit don't want it to stand out more, it doesn't have to stand out really bad, just enough so that it has a bit of opacity to it and cover it a bit. There. See that? Let's get in there, but I'll just get a bit more of the colour. Just want it to stand out a tiny bit more in there. Apply it and then blend it afterwards too. Just don't get too carried away with this, putting too much in there. Something I want to avoid, if at all possible. See like there, see how I got that big amount on? That's what I don't want. But I can just come in now. I didn't get too much and I can just blend that. Nice and softly, just up in there. Oh wait, I'm going to get, in my lifetime, I just know it, I'm going to get a chance to go see this at some stage. It's got to happen. I think you can even see it someplace like Scotland sometime. So that's more than likely what I'll do. bits of that red. I hope it's standing out on camera to you all. I'm always just being very careful not to get too much on there. It looks so good and it gets looking good. There's a tendency to overdo it. The more you do it, the less opaque it becomes. Uh, the more opaque it becomes, and you start to not be able to see through it as much. Whereas there, you can still see the stars through this colour, and that's what the thing that I'm after. That's the effect that I'm after. Yeah, a bit of that, even right onto the end of there, but it dies off. Just on there, it dies off a little bit. I'm just using these up and downward strokes, leave a few areas in between as well. That's good. Now I'm just on the horizon, just down in here. I'm just going to flick a bit of that colour up. Just there. I've heard an explanation before for why the aurora borealis is there but uh, I can never remember it if there's anybody out there watching this let me know I find it extremely interesting such a beautiful phenomenon a little bit of a glow on the camera but you can still see it just about I just don't want to go too overboard of it at first the best airing on the side of caution at first you can always make it brighter it's a lot harder to take it off if you overdo it it'll just get brighter and brighter all the time until you're happy with it and then you can just say right I'll leave it at that point cool see the sun's going to be going down just over this way the sun will be going actually it's starting to go down so 
there's going to be some light down there from that. So I'm just pulling a bit of this red down, a tiny little bit of it there. This will be one of them paintings that looks good on camera, but looks so much better in real life. You can really see everything that's going on in there then. And now and again, what I want to do is I just want to step, pull up a little bit further, just let it blend out. I don't want it to stop dead. I want it to be nice and soft. The graduation between where this dark starts and this red, you know, starts in between. Get a nice blend. Don't get any of this red down in here. Because we want this to be lit up for our sun. Pull it up. Right, getting the mic in this. Always keep stepping back. Have a good old look while you're stepping back. Right. Let me get some more. On. I fired it up a bit, didn't it? That's why you're going to be careful. You just you can easily go too far. So that good. That's lit up nicely for me. That just need to now. Gently blend it all out. So, if I continue using this brush, let's have a look. Yeah, it's running out of paint now. So that's pretty good, that's perfect. Blend it soft. Nice and soft. Some areas can be a bit brighter than others. Stand out a little bit more. Always make sure they've been blended nice and soft. Not too opaque. Normally I do the crisscross strokes, but with this I'm not. This is different. It's a fine line between too much and not enough. So just be aware of that. Now then. I'm happy it's getting there. Trying to put, put, blend those areas a bit more in there. Sometimes just go in if it's not blending right. You can just do that. Yeah, I blended it a bit better together. And it gets a bit darker towards there. Right, so I'm going to mix some titanium white and some small, just a small amount of yellow to the white. So titanium white and a small amount of yellow in that. Just, just the yellow. And then with that, I'm just going to come over in here and I'm just going to use crisscross strokes up in there just little crisscross strokes it's really bright and then from there I want to blend up into this red basically so you can actually pull some of this light into there, a bit like that. When you blend this up, pick up little bits of that red just up in there, and that's what I want. I just don't want to drag it down yet into this, so I'm doing it first like this. Let it get a bit of a blend in there so it's all it's nice. A little bit of a pinky colour. 
that she'll get on the in-between parts. You know when it's going in between the light area and this red. It even comes right down into here. Allow it to pick that colour up. That's what you want. But these little marks that you can see here, the lines, they'll be vanishing very soon as soon as we blend it out. So I'm just going to blend this out now with this same brush. Not applying too much pressure because uh, we've got the white on this brush, you see. So if we blend it too much, it'll get too opaque. I'll blend it to a degree where I'm happy. And then if I need to use a different brush, it's easy enough, isn't it? It's not a problem. Just let that blend up into that red. Don't contaminate this part with this colour. It's not what I want. I can soften this edge here. I'll soften it off in a bit. I'm just stopping there. I want it to be softer so I can actually use crisscross strokes. Blend it into this area up here. And we'll pick up a little bit of that colour. You can start to let it blend out to nothing up in there. Like low, just in there. Now, when I go back here, it's not going to really contaminate this area much, which is what I wanted. Maybe just a little bit of this along the horizon, just in there. We can choose what we want. To show if we're not. A lot of this is going to be covered up. I want some mountains to come in here and stuff, so a lot of it's going to be covered up with that. So that gives a bit more of this white in here. And then gently allow it to soften in here and just blend up with that. Part. Bring these two together basically. It's amazing how bright it is, this sun going down really is bright. So we can even just get some more white and just go right in here. There you go. Don't overdo so that you can't go over the top of it. Sometimes you put so much on that you can't even go over the top of it and that's not what you want to do. Just want it to be much whiter and brighter in this area and then blend it to this tone. So you can't see any of the black as well. The more you blend, the less of that you'll see. There. Okay. Right, so I'm just going to come in and start doing some blending now in between the two. I'm going to use a big Bertha brush and I'm going to try and blend in between them two. See that? Just soften that. Even just in there. You might pick up a bit of that white on there but it's not a problem. You just blend that up into the red. That's the effect. That's it. 
you should get a pinky hue around this area. See how soft that is? So we want that softness. The red's not standing out as bright as it is in real life, but I'm sure in daytime, if I show you, you'll be able to see then how bright it is. See, it's fine when you have to be transparent, but yet you still want it to show. As you're blending, you're going to end up bringing a bit of this white up into the red. But that's fine, that's what we want. It's not a lot. It's just going to be enough, just enough. See, you've got a little hair there. Always working with small amounts of paint, basically. In there. I'm going to put a bit more of the red. See, I said you can go backwards and forwards, which you will have to do when you're blending a lot like this. You sometimes can lose a little bit of the intensity of colour when you're blending, as you're washing it out a bit. That's why I say don't worry, you can just put it straight back in again without any problems. Just in there where you can. That white you've pulled up is going to make it stand out a tiny bit more too. Yeah. See that, that just on top as well, just in there. So, now I just want to check how that's looking. Right. That's good. Just going to use my blender brush and I'm going to. Soften that. So you did see the mines. See the mines there. Not as bad now. That's it. Nice and softly blend out there. to nothing. Such a soft brush, this is beautiful. I just love it. Just using little circles basically then.